And that right there is a beautiful lobster mushroom. First thing is when you're mushroom foraging, you need to cover a ton of ground. So you need to put your walking boots on, you need to move a lot. With lobsters, I typically look in a forest, much like we're in, it's pretty dry and brown on the ground. I don't often find lobsters in this, but what I do is I look in the distance, and if I see a little patch of moss, either a green patch or reindeer lichen, which kind of has that grayish white color to it, that's where I usually seem to find lobster mushrooms. All right, so right here below my feet, you can see that there's some Cool little orange things popping up through the moss. And if I just move things back a little bit, we've got ourselves a lobster. So there's some mushrooms that you find that are really obvious. You can see them from a long ways away when you're walking around, they're popping up, they grow really large. A lobster mushroom might stand out based on its really vibrant color. However, for the most part, you, you need to rummage around for them and they're hiding underneath the moss. they have a really unique seafood sort of aroma to them. So not only do they have that sort of cooked lobster color to them, they get their name from the aroma. Sometimes if we found these things maybe a week or two from now when they're starting to expire a little more, the forest would actually smell like bad seafood. But the other most amazing thing about a lobster mushroom is that these things don't really exist on their own. When this mushroom is growing under the ground, it's not a lobster mushroom, it's typically uh, another type of mushroom called a Rosella or a Lactarius. There's actually one growing right over here. The lobster spore attacks this regular mushroom growing up under the moss and transforms it completely into a different mushroom. So it can even take a mushroom that is quite unedible and something that you don't want to eat and transform it into a lobster mushroom, which is very much a prized edible. And what you see as well is the texture also transforms. So we've got this mushroom that's pretty easy to break apart. It's quite feeble. It has these gills underneath it. And when it turns into a lobster, it sort of folds it up and comes up like a bit of a tulip. And it takes all of those gills and transforms them into these super dense ribs so that this mushroom really doesn't have any gills to it at all. The texture also changes. So if we look at the lobster and cut this thing open, it's got this white, hard flesh inside, this really foamy sort of dense texture. So when you're looking at a lobster mushroom and how to tell maybe a good one from a bad one, this color is a nice, fully matured lobster mushroom. They get this red color. They can get a little darker as well. And if you look down under this patch of moss, this one has started to get a little bit darker and it's a little soft. It doesn't have that nice firm texture to it. It's kind of spongy and gross. And what you can see is the spores are starting to really release on the outside. So they get this white film that sort of starts to grow this fuzz on the outside. And at that point, the mushroom sort of lived its life. It's going on to decay a little more in the ground and breathe life back into the earth. And it'll pop up next year as something else. A really fresh one is going to look like this. So it has more of a light color to it. And if you cut it open, it just has this beautiful white flesh going on. And it doesn't have as much of a fishy smell to it. It smells like a really beautiful forest. A mushroom cap often grows up with the cap up. Lobster mushrooms like to sort of fold in dirt and sand around them. They can get pretty gritty inside. So before I put this in my pail and bring it back home to eat, I'll take my brush and I'll just start making sure that I get all of the dirt knocked out of this thing. And there's nothing wrong with before eating this and cutting it up on the cutting board to just run it under the tap, give it another little scrub to make sure that you get all the sandy bits because you don't want any sand in your food. You can even break them apart a little bit or cut them up. Make sure that you can get into all of these little nooks and crannies really well with the brush. Brush them up, give them a rinse, dry them off, and then you can cook them like you'd cook any other mushroom. 
you got to make sure that you cook them and you can use it somewhat like you would use a potato you can shave it you can make hash brown type style dishes with it or you can just roast this and it has this beautiful juicy texture to it when you when you cook it they have this like amazing presence on a plate because of this wild color <laughs>